Welcome to Cascai Send for the final day of the 2015 season and of course the final day of the Cascais Cup. Sage is set, Azura have won the championship but they have a battle on to win the Cascais Cup. They're six points behind and the battle for third place overall for the season is on also and will conclude today with Platoon holding a six point lead going onto the water. Fabulous finale, what a great day. We want to finish strong. We want to win the last regatta. We want to have a good day today. These guys, Azura has done a great job this year and our hats off to them uh, for winning the season, but for sure we want to finish strong. Winning the season with a day to spare is it's, it's obviously a nice thing. Unfortunately, yesterday we didn't say like we know that we can do and we lost the lead in, in this regatta, but, but we know what we have to do in order to come back and hopefully today we'll have a chance of giving the Quantum guys a good fight. So race number nine starts, six to eight knots of breeze. Vesper start on the left side, pays off and lead all the way around. Quantum second, Azura seventh, so the advantage. But the Cascais Cup swings to Quantum Racing. Platoon finish ninth, uh, lead out onto the final race with a two point lead in the battle for third overall. The final race, Azura showboating all the way, lead uh, comfortably all the way around the course. Quantum Racing uh, take the regatta and uh, third place goes to Sled for the Series Championship and Vesper third overall. Last couple of regattas we've really shown our true true metal, you know, a good winning couple there, Ray, and uh, you know, here we sell very, very consistently and uh, ended up with a nice eight point lead at the end. So I'm incredibly proud to be here in second place. Yeah, winning the last two regattas, you yeah, know, we knew that we'd know we're in the right going in the right direction. So the Cascais Cup final standings after 10 races, Quantum Racing win on 27 points, second Azura on 35 and third Vesper on 46. The 2015-52 Super Series champions are Azura, second are Quantum Racing, third Sled, very close with uh, Platoon and Brunina Seg. Really feeling very nice, winning the last race is... It's a good memory for, for the rest of the winter. We are going to be missing this series a lot. It's very important also finishing the, the season here in Cascais with a solid second place, a good podium. In the last race, I think it's, it's very, very good. Very, very grateful for the whole Surramer family and, and especially to Alberto Ramer Seniors who gave us the opportunity to be what we are now and for sure he has changed the history of the sailing in Argentina. It is very important because uh, the last races we have not uh, developed a good result and it's good to end, end up first and, and show that we, we are going to be the number one for the whole year next year. So what a ride it's been, the 2015 season has been fantastic, finishing up here in Cascais with a great regatta. Join us again next year when the 2016-52 Super Series gets underway. Los Angeles County in Southern California is the location for the 18th edition of the Rolex Far 40 World Championship. Hosted by Long Beach Yacht Club, this is the pinnacle of the Far 40 racing season. An international fleet of 17 yachts is competing in 11 fiercely contested races. With the winner decided by the cumulative results from every race, consistency is the key to success. Everybody is here, there's a lot of buzz in the air. Just got that feel, that magic. But watch out for tomorrow. The gloves are gonna come off. Anybody can win this. Everybody is chasing this engraved Rolex watch, and it's war. Day one's racing got off to an eventful start. Pre-championship favorites, Enfant Terrible, were penalised as they attempted to steal space ahead of Plenty at the first downwind mark. Alberto Ross's team suffered a penalty turn which ended their race challenge. Flash Gordon 6 was also the subject of a protest as their spinnaker made contact with Asterisk Nuno whilst jiving. The protest was upheld, placing Helmut Yard's otherwise promising US team last in race 1. 
while Wolfgang Schaefer's German bird Struntje Light won the battle for first place. In race two, Off and Terrible suffered further challenges as they broke the start line too early and were almost last as they restarted. They now face a huge challenge to win the championship. Last year's winner, Alex Ropers Plenty, won in fine form, holding off competition from Hasip Gens' Turkish boat, Asterisk Uno. In race three, Flash Gordon 6 completed what would have been a good day's work, were it not for their earlier disqualification. At the end of day one, there was a familiar look to the standings, with Plenty holding a narrow lead. The compelling racing seen in this World Championship is thanks to the stringent one design rules of the class. The great thing about the Far 40 class is that the boats are identical. Everyone's out there on an even basis. The exquisite detail brought to bear on weighing the boats, weighing the keels, the mast, the crews, and adhering to the technical standards, it's everything. And it's the character of each team's owner helmsman that defines this unique one design racing class. Great owners, that's an easy one. I mean, the competition is really, really good, but the owners are really, really good. This year's favorites include last year's winners Plenty and this year's international circuit champions Enfant Terrible. Both teams know how hard it will be to win in 2015. The level is really similar and uh, any boats of the top team can be the winner. Many boats uh, have a good chance here. It doesn't take much. It's a game of inches. The second day of the regatta saw three more races contested with the championship wide open. John Demorcus's Gruvedecci started their solid start to the event, with a hard-fought win having been pushed all the way by the Corinthian boat Cal Maritime. In race five, a precise performance from Wolfgang Schaefer's Struntje Light won them their second race of the championship. Race six was won by Plenty, whilst more skillful helmsmanship from Wolfgang Schaefer and John Demorcus saw their boats Struntje Light and Gruvedecci take second and third respectively. Today, we were a little bit more lucky. And we have a good crew, the guys picked up the situation and picked up the opportunity. And at the end, these guys did, did a wonderful job. So at the end of day two, Strunchy Light narrowly hit Gruvedecci at the top of the standings. Things couldn't be tighter with just seven points separating the top four places. This Rolex Far 40 World Championship is likely to see many more twists before a winner is crowned. Stay tuned for all the news as this exciting regatta continues to unfold.
Bravo Bel boulot Bravo Bravo, bravo C'est pas fini, hein C'est pas fini, mais bon... Bravo ouais, Un gros vrai. bravo encore ouais. Ouais. La mer, ouais, qui était, la, mer, euh, la mer était un peu dans qui était, qui était dure et du coup il euh, fallait pouvoir accélérer sans. Là c'est vrai que j'ai pas eu trop d'état d'âme pour le bateau à ce moment-là. Ah ouais Non. <rire> Puis, ça, ça passe ou ça casse. <rire> c'est passé. passé. <rire> Avec de la chance c'est passé. Ah ouais. <rire> il y a quand même un petit peu de réussite et un petit peu de chance là-dedans. Mais euh, non, non, super. Non, non. Et puis à la fin, euh, la glissade au portant, que du bonheur. Ouais. Ce bateau m'étonne de jour en jour. C'est euh, vraiment un bateau incroyable. Ouais, c'est une belle réussite ce bateau. C'était parfait. Super course. Puis visiblement, j'ai mis un peu d'écart avec les autres, donc euh... c'est donc parfait. This is the Australian National Women's Match Racing Championship. So uh, we've got teams from all around Australia. We've even got a team from New Zealand uh, flying over the ditch to come and participate. And we've got a good 20, 25 knots gusting 30 on pit water. It's uh, shifts all over the place, and they're having a great time uh, sailing on the uh, the Elliott Sevens from the Royal Prince Alfred Yacht Club uh, with the asymmetric sails. And there's uh, it's fresh and frightening sometimes, and uh, a few good rain squalls coming through. And the girls are doing a really good job uh, keeping us busy on the umpire boats. And uh, yeah, it should be some great match racing over this weekend. How many, how many boats are there? Man? So we've got eight boats, eight boats, eight teams. Uh, we're doing a double round robin, so they need to get to sail each other uh, twice. And uh, then we'll go into a semi-finals and a finals knockout. And uh, at the end of that, we should have the uh, best Australian team, and they'll go on to represent Australia at uh, things like Nations Cup and things like that. Do you swap boats? Uh, we will swap when we get to the knockout rounds. At the moment, they've uh, we've drawn for boats in the round robin, so they'll, uh, they'll get the boat that they've got. These are brand new boats uh, for the Alfred, so they're very, very evenly matched, nice new sails on them, and uh, yeah, it's great, uh, great match racing to watch. And if, you, you know, if anyone's around, they should come out and get a, have a look at it.
This is the Sailing Champions League 2015 from the Yacht Club Costa Smeralda in beautiful Porto Cervo, Sardinia. 30 teams from 14 countries competed for this beautiful silver trophy and for the right to call themselves the best sailing club of the year. Let's hear from some of the competitors and find out what they think of Sailing Champions League and Yacht Club Costa Smeralda. Perfect weather, perfect wind, um, great boats. So we're really keen to, to race against other clubs and countries from all over Europe. Oh, it's fantastic, the swimming pool and uh, 30 degrees and everything is just as we dreamed up before we came. It's uh, going back to the original real sailing event. It's fantastic watching the race in our water. Racing was in one design J70 sports boats provided by the organisers. Teams switch boats between races, so this is a true test of their sailing skills and racing tactics. There was a range of wind conditions over the weekend, from light and shifty to strong and gusty, with some vicious slams that caused problems for some of the teams. One of the most exciting features of the Sailing Champions League is the SAP Analytics software. All the boats are fitted with GPS tracking units, so you can see 2D and 3D images of the racing. And there's real-time wind data, so you have a completely accurate picture of every race, and you can analyse key incidents. After 40 races, there was a clear winner. The team from Kongelig Norsk Salforening, the Royal Norway Yacht Club. They were remarkably consistent, scoring seven firsts, two seconds and a third. It's absolutely super. I'm so proud being uh, together with the best uh, friends and or with these guys. And uh, now we're going to have a nice prize giving and we're going to maybe have a small party. Yeah! Yeah! The Sailing Champions League in Porto Cervo was an outstanding success, thoroughly enjoyed by competitors, spectators thousands who followed the coverage online. That's it for 2015. See you all again next year. like out there today. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a little bit of a subtly to start the day. We're just hoping they lower that post Bournemouth flag. There you go. Good luck to you. Thank you. Down, down you come, down you come. Good stop. Okay, fresh air at his transom. Get up to win with me. Room to take! Room to attack! Room to attack! The pass had to win. Their pass had to win. You've tacked! Staying clear of the big mess of boats who will stop me from manoeuvring where I want. 
Hello all stations, hello all stations, hello all stations. Good morning, this is the New York Yacht Club Race Committee for the Rolex New York Yacht Club Invitational Cup for 2015. Good luck out there. Thank you. We want to start near the top half of the line and try to work our way over to the right. Big ace on the gym. Big ace on the gym. Yep. Wait in, wait in. Full go range away. Great work, guys. Let me know what. Just work it down and quick when you can. Bit of pressure then. Pressure increasing from behind. Nice work guys. Good job. Come on guys. Right side, right side, push it! No, no, 